This large LED light has been patiently waiting for its uh, video to be made because uh, at the time I bought it, I'd bought a load of other LED lights and I just thought there were just too many and there was a risk of it starting to look a bit uh, repetitive. I mean, ultimately, I do quite a lot of LED lights on this channel. So this one came from eBay, surprise, surprise. It came from a seller called Sunny My Boy 10 and uh, it was available in 9 watt up to 45 watt. They didn't list the 45 watt in the, the listing. Now, if you want to find these lights, just search for 9W, 12W, 15W, 21W, 27W, 36W in a, a row on your uh, search and you'll find loads of lights like this. It seems to be a very common sort of LED downlight. And uh, this is supposedly the 45 watt one, which means that they, they're claiming it's got 15 3 watt LEDs, and it may well have 15 3 watt LEDs, but when the driver says um, 42 to 68 volts at 300 milliamps, then it's not going to be, uh, whatever they are, they're not going to be run at 300, 3 watts each, it's going to be more like a 1 watt, LED, one watt uh, dissipation per LED, so that's going to be about 15 watts uh, for this light, but you know, that's fine, I, I do prefer you know, to keep the power dissipation low. So let's bring in uh, the meter, power meter. Let's bring in, bring in the quick test. I'll mention again, the quick test is a device, uh, I believe it's made in the UK, or uh, certainly it's sold from the UK. And uh, it's a tester, and I've, I've got a video dedicated to it. I, I'm mentioning this because, you know, every time I bring this out, people ask what it is. It's a very convenient way of making electrical connection at a bench. So that's it lit, said Clive, pick it up gingerly because you just don't know what's isolated, what's not these days. Uh, power is 13.8 watts. So, uh, well, 30 point, yeah, 30.8. So it's actually just under 15 watts per, uh, for the fi fi fixture, so it's just under one watt per LED. And the pattern is very, it's quite a focused beam uh, with a slight pinkish tinge. It's warm white with a pinkish and a hint of blue in the middle. So, uh, Enough of that, let's take it to bits. Now I will say, looking at this light, I thought that the LEDs weren't 100% lined up perfectly behind the uh, reflector, because it's one, instead of being individual lenses, one per LED. Well, I suppose technically speaking it is, but they're all on the one plastic plate. All these lenses are moulded together. And when you look at it, they're just not quite 100% all perfectly aligned. The construction is very modular, as a lot of these things are. The power supply unplugs, so you can change it when the previous one went bang. Uh, the swivelable light, I mean, this is designed to go into the sort of plasterboard ceilings. Is it gyp rock ceilings or, yep, they've got, I, I'm trying to think, rock sheet? I, I'm trying to remember some of the names around the world, but we call it plasterboard in the UK because it's board made of plaster. But, uh, it's designed to go into your ceiling and these little tabs go up and you put it through the hole and then these spring down to hold it in place. And then you angle it into whatever sort of, you, you can rotate it in the ceiling and then angle it into whatever position you want. And this is where it's just got one screw either side and this is very common. Uh, but that doesn't really hold it tightly so I'm guessing that these things probably just slop at a random angle after a while. So let's undo those. These also tend to hold the central core into the sort of outer frame like that. Put that out of the way. Then usually, usually there's a outer ring that screws on, and this is where, if it was all individual ends, it would make a horrible mess. Okay, I'm seeing lots of a uh, heat sink goop now, just out of interest. If I actually position this over the LEDs and then shuffle about a bit, do they ever 100% line up? No, they don't. I think these LEDs have largely been put in manually. Uh, either that or the, I mean, they all look fairly well aligned, um, but they, they're not quite matching these lenses. Unless there's a slight discrepancy between that and the circuit board. I don't see any screws holding this on, so I'm guessing, yeah, that's sliding. I'm guessing that when the outer frame is uh, screwed on this uh, lens assembly here will then just uh, press the circuit, the aluminium core circuit board down onto the back of the heat sink. Hmm, okay, that's reasonable enough. There's plenty of the heat sink goo. It's actually just kind of squirted everywhere, hasn't it? It's just squished out all those holes. How many screws are holding? 
how is this heat sink actually fastened on? Oh, I see what it is. Uh, there are three screws centrally behind this. They must be recessed. I'm not going to pull this off because it's just going to be gooey and sticky. But that's all that appears to be holding onto this heat sink plate. So I suppose ultimately most of the heat is being transferred through the centre. It's not as if this uh, these fins were actually bonded directly onto that. So there's possibly a slight air gap. Uh, and the only place it's going to be really making good connection is at the central core, but that's still going to work. Um, it's it's quite a nice chunky light. I mean, ultimately, the fact it's being underrun is something that I just prefer, to be honest. So let's um, take a look at the power supply. This probably shouldn't really hold many surprises. Quite a big transformer. Um. It's got a chip, let's see, the, it's got the supply going in, which I suppose I should short out this metal screwdriver, but I'm not touching anything else at the same time, so that's all right. So it's got a fairly fat capacitor. 10 microfarad, 400 volt. It's got a full bridge rectifier, which is good. It's got the chip, which has some support components around it. And the chip is called... Oh, that's quite hard to read, actually. This is one that, it's because it's laser etched onto it, and it's laser etched thinly, it's actually quite hard to read. PL3536. Is that one we've come across before? I can see a, a number of very low value resistors, like 2.2 ohm, 2.4, 2.7. I wonder if they're in clustered in parallel. If, I wonder if they're current sense resistors. Uh, this little capacitor here will probably be a bootstrap type power supply for the uh, chip and then this one here is the output uh, capacitor probably with there's a little resistor there that's probably just across that capacitor uh, just to act as a small load and just to make sure the LEDs go out quickly and that's fundamental there's a fairly beefy diode in the output which is good a few components scattered underneath Just typical isolation that you'd expect in one of these units. Um, and ultimately you've got a second layer of isolation is uh, the fact that, you know, this uh, the copper layer of this circuit board is insulated by thin shimmer fiberglass from the aluminium core PCB behind it. So um, it's a chunky light, it's quite neat, it's just really what you'd expect. Uh, it is hackable, you could change the LEDs if you wanted, you could fix it if you wanted. The LEDs are all just in series in one big sort of, almost like a spiral. Um, well, I say a spiral, they actually it does. It comes up, the black comes up, goes round the outside, comes back down and then doubles back on the inside and then goes over to the red. But, um, yeah, it's neat enough, it's, it's quite a nice light. Um, and... Uh, Really, they're just, well, it even says 15 watt on it. It's, you know, why do they say 45 watt? They're just, uh, they're just cheating, really. It's just, uh, it's just predictable. But uh, other than that, you know, it's, it's a nice construction. It's uh, pretty logical. There's no great surprises in it. And, uh, other, you know, it seems quite a chunky and robust unit. So, you know, it's, it's okay.